Hello from my name is Flair Bliss and welcome to Balance of Power. What's harder than trying to adapt to university life with none of your old friends to support you? Doing that exact thing at a university where everyone has their own individualized power, even if they are usually more mundane than super. Join the protagonist as they settle into undergraduate life at the University of Waterford, help them meet new people, make new friends, and solve problems both personal and magic in La nature, sorry. Maybe even find love. Also, there might be a dangerous individual among us. So this is a visual novel. It has both romance and comedy in it. Okay, before we start, would you like to tone hints for controversial choices? What do you mean by tone hints? Um Wow, that looks amazing. Tone hints will tell you what tone you give your answer in. For example, uh wow, that looks amazing. Uh, looks great, sincere. I'm more of a sincere guy. Or you can play without them, like this. Um, looks great. Would you like tone hints for the choices? Yes. Thank you, you can toggle this at any time with the T button. However, it won't change the choices that are currently on screen. Now, let's fill out your student card. I am of the masculine nature. My name is Flair, my last name. Gosh, I put this on a uh, vision novel not too long ago, and this would only be something if there was a female-only protagonist choice. Um, I am he, him, his. Thank you. Are these details correct? Yes. Welcome to Waterford, Mr. Fleury. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your time here as a student. Chapter 1, Introductions. The best way to break barriers is to be comfortable with introductions. That doesn't seem good from the offset. It's dark. I'm scared. Please. I don't want it to be dark anymore. And the heavens open. Huh? Library? Why do our powers manifest the way they do? During a moment of great distress in childhood, the innate magic within each of us will flare up, taking a form that is unique to each person. This will become your power for life. Because of a wide variety of situations in which a kid can feel extreme levels of stress and, or depression, there's a multitude of different powers out there. They are as varied and unique as people themselves. It can be said that there is a certain logic to how your power is decided. Reminds me of Chaos Child in a way, where at a certain point in time there was a catastrophe within the town where people of a similar age group to the ones here somehow develop powers of their, not their choosing, but by event association. If during the moment of distress you wish to be somewhere, anywhere else, your power will likely be teleportation based, for instance. But there are any number of ways to deal with a problem, and any number of powers that might develop as a result. Truthfully, we still don't know everything that goes into shaping them. How much does the child decide the power? Can it be influenced by anyone other than the child? Would it be possible to avoid developing a power at all by avoiding stress? It could be activated depending on the conditions needed to actually activate those powers in the first place. The oldest recorded age for someone getting a power was 13. Can you really trust that child with those powers? For goodness sakes. Like, you can't trust children nowadays, let alone if they have some supernatural power... Like, I don't want some seven-year-old metamorphing into some sort of Dialga. But is it possible to never gain one at all? Despite a lot of questionable experiments in the past, there's still a lot we don't know. There is one thing everybody knows, though. Your power inevitably ends up shaping your life. And while most people would agree that any power at all is better than none, some are definitely more valued than others. My power. 
<sighs> and stare at the assignment brief again, asking how I plan to use my power in the future career. In my future career. It's only my second week at university. Do I really have to think about this now? Yes, I'm not even locked into the course of study I want to take here. Everybody has to take ethics of power usage, but other than that, you can try out as many classes as you can handle. I was excited to be at university at last. There was so much I was looking forward to. Meeting new people, lived on my own, and best of all, learning in an environment completely different to school. Looking down on my blank sheet of paper, however, I'm reminded that not everything is different. <sighs> what the hell am I meant to write? I begin to lean back in my chair and rock slightly. Huh? What are those things? I reach out and attempt to touch one of the small lights, but my finger passes right through. Whatever they are, they're nice. I feel warm and calm. A sense of comfort rises in me, as if everything is going to be alright. Hello! Hi there, a boy suddenly appears from behind, causing me to jump in my seat. That's a nice little portrait right there. He has a relaxed, friendly countenance and an easygoing smile. He seems like a bright person. I was so wrapped up in the feelings of the lights, I haven't even noticed him approach. Jeez, you scared the life out of me. I feel like I know this guy. I think he's in a few of my classes. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. You just looked a bit down is all. And I wanted to see if you were doing okay. I am, thanks to these weird lights. Or at least I was until you startled me. Your name is Tommy, isn't it? I think we have classes together. That's me. You're Flair, right? I nod, then gesture at one of the lights, innocently bobbing me, bobbing next to me. Are you the one making these? He smiles gently. Yeah, hope you don't mind. You look stressed. He waves his hand and the lights disappear. I'm kind of sad to see them go. Well, thanks. Sir, so you can create lights. Pretty much. Good for a night light or a quick pick-me-up. I feel calmer when they're around. Was well, that something they always do? Yeah, they can help calm people. Not the most badass power I know. He gives a small embarrassed grin that relaxes into a more genuine smile. But I like it. Hmm. It's alright. It's a decent power. I can imagine it comes in handy for night time trips to the fridge. <laughs> I guess it does. Saves me a lot of stubbed toes. That's fair enough. And there's my alarm. Time for class. Guess I can finish the assignment later. Hey, we have a literature together right now. We do. Want to walk together? I'd love to. I shove my papers into my bag and head out of the library. There's always that one person you get along with quite well. We end up making it to the classroom, even before the teacher. I guess we're stuck waiting in the hallway. Strange for a teacher not to be here by now. Probably just running late. Hey, if it isn't Sparkles. Who are you talking about? I look past Tommy to see a boy making his way up to the corridor towards us. A girl clutches his arms, giggling. I look around confused as the guy seems to be speaking in my direction. And then I clock eyes with Tommy who's, in fro who's frozen in place. Hey, are you okay? Ah, uh, yeah. No greeting for me, Sparkles. Come on, don't be rude. Tommy's lights flare for a second, and this time I barely see his smile drop before it's back again. Tommy swivels on his heels to face the approaching guy. Hey, morning, Zack. That's better. But I think you should do something to make up for ignoring me like that. Come on, fairy lights. Give us a show. Oh, dear. This Zack is a bully. The boy flicks his wrist and Tommy is knocked backwards. Tommy smacks painfully into the wall without Zack even touching him. Hey! Tommy recovers himself quickly, stands up from warm rubbing his arm. The girl by Zack's side giggles nervously. Come on, you know you shouldn't pick a fight. Huh? What's he gonna do? Light up the hallway for me? Come on, I said put up a show. You do realize he could just punch you. Zack scoffles. And who the blank are you? Whatever, he's a kind of wuss that has a nightlight as a power. He wouldn't dare. Let's go, Chloe. 
Oh dear. Again, people abusing their powers, just like in politics. I make to argue as Zack walks away, but I feel a hand pulling gently at my shirt. It's okay. It's not okay. They can say what they want about it, but I love my power. Still. I don't think that's the main issue here, exactly. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks, though. Anyway, look. Tommy points down the corridor. The teacher's here. I try to talk to the teacher about what just happened. He says he'll look into it. But I feel a little like I just got brushed off. Tommy tells me not to worry about it and tugs me inside. Hmm, this is where Tommy and I split up. As I head to take my usual seat without thinking. The last of the students flood into the room before the teacher passes the register around. As I sign next to my name and go to pass it along, I notice that Ellie's raid isn't here again. It's been a couple of classes now, but I don't think they have ever been here. Maybe they dropped out. The teacher stands at the front of the class and begins to write on the blackboard. Okay class, to begin today's lesson you're going to need to pair up, so find a partner. For the first 10 minutes, discuss amongst yourselves how the later reveal of Peter's powers recontextualizes the power dynamics in chapter 12. I start to look around the room and it seems that most of the class are already making their way to their friends. I've already gotten to know anyone in literature class yet. Maybe I can team up with whoever is left. Hey, wanna team up? Tommy appears next to me, this time at my side. Jeez, Tommy, I need to get you a bell or something. Sure, seems like everyone else is pretty much paired up anyway. Awesome, I'll take a seat right here then. Tommy places his bag on the floor between his feet and sits next to me. As Tommy sits down, his expression changes from the cheerful one I'm used to. Okay, but before we start, you need to know something. What? Tommy lets out a nervous laugh. I don't actually know what Peter's power is. I must not have read that bit yet. Your silence is worrying me. An excellent start to being my partner. <laughs> he scratches his cheek. Eh, um... Sorry. I meant to finish reading last night, but I found it really hard to focus. I kept getting distracted. Not a fan of a book? No, I really do like it. It's just a struggle to sit down sometimes. Sit still sometimes. Do you ever get that? Who doesn't? So what were you doing instead of a required reading? Anything and everything. Tommy, that's another small nervous laugh. Listening to music, playing on my phone, watching TV. I'd keep going back to it, reading a bit and then realise I'd forgotten what I read before. <laughs> then I fell asleep. <sighs> what do you do when you get home? Apart from being a better student than me. Uh, I do literally nothing. Um, I run a crime ring. I do... I do the normal stuff. Tommy looks ar around at the tables near him. There's really a lot of options in this game, so I'm thinking how many endings are they going to be? What is he doing? He begins to write with a serious expression before turning a paper to face me. Z uh, this answer needs more detail. It sure does. Seriously? All that for a joke? What can I say? We're comedians. We comedians must commit to our craft. But not in this kind of environment, Tommy. I take the paper and pencil from his hands. I begin to write on the paper. I turn to show him the finished product, which now states, This comedy act needs refining. C. Not bad. If you need, if you help me out, I sure can get at least a C+. I can see you have big ambitions. B as in big, A as in awesome, S as in special. I have faith in you to help me out, me, help me meet them. <laughs> so, what are we meant to be doing again? Five minutes left, guys. We're meant to be writing about Peter's powers. Crap. I quickly catch Tommy up on what Peter's powers is, and we hurry to discuss chapter 12 before the teacher moves on with the lesson. Luckily, the rest of the class is a breeze. The teacher keeps us in our groups of two, something Tommy and myself use to talk about anything other than work. Class finishes a few minutes early and everyone is allowed to leave. Tommy and I stand in the corridor just outside the classroom. Hey Tommy, 
I've got ethics of power usage next. What about you? Aw, I have psychology. Ah, oh, guess we'll be splitting up for now then. This was actually pretty fun. I guess I'll see you in the library again. Or at least next time we have literature. Tommy grins. Yeah, definitely. I wave goodbye as we each set off in different directions. I'm glad to have made a friend. At least, I hope I can call him that. As I walk to my next class, I start to hear faint piano music coming from down the corridor and around the corner. I wonder who's playing. Whoever it is, they're really good. Recently, I played a visual novel that involves someone playing a piano, and they were quite the mean person. So I hope this is not the same case <laughs> once more. I decide to take the slightly longer route towards class, drawn to the beautiful music. As I round the corner, there's a bunch of people gathering around a single classroom doorway that is ever so slightly open. I can hear a few of the students whispering amongst themselves. She's amazing. I didn't realize piano could sound so good. Isn't she a first year? Managing to poke my head into the small gap between two students I can see inside the room. Ah. <laughs> inside is a girl playing the piano seemingly flawlessly. She has a look of concentration on her face as her fingers float across the keys. Even though she is concentrating, it looks as if plain is second nature to her. A sudden voice from behind me rises above those of us in the doorway. What's going on here? Ah, I see. The girl at the piano stops playing as she also hears the teacher. Come on now, everyone. That's enough loitering. Please be on your way. The female teacher claps twice gently before attempting to hurry us along. The students around me disperse quickly. The teacher steps into the room with a girl, pulling the door mostly shut as she enters. As I leave, I catch a small part of this conversation. Well then, Jack, back to, your, back to basics for you then. It's a shame considering how far you had come. Back to basics? But she is the best piano player I've ever heard. Hmm. Ethics of power usage goes by quickly. I spend the majority of the class lost in my own head. Regardless, the chance for lunch afterwards is a welcomed break. Ah, lunchtime. The perfect time to think on all my to do essays. Oh, to do essays, sorry. In the cafeteria, there are already a large amount of people queuing up to get food. It takes a while, but I grab a sandwich and a drink and head to find somewhere to sit down. There are only a few tables left that aren't already full. There is, however, one that's fully empty, save for a single person. Oh, it's the girl I saw playing piano earlier. Jack, was it? She seems to be picking up, picking up her food. Maybe she's lonely. Think about it earlier today. I decide to follow in Timmy's footsteps and approach her. Hey there. I saw you play the piano earlier. You were really good. The girl looks a bit, little surprised at being spoken to out of nowhere. <laughs> huh? You were watching me? What are you, a stork? <laughs> this is exactly the same reaction that we got from the visual novel called Once More. I'm not one of these people. For goodness sakes. There's a difference between watching and stalking. No, no, you misunderstood. I just heard your music and, um... I'm just missing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Shortly after I started playing, I noticed a bunch of people watching me. And you didn't mind? Well, I wasn't going to stop. They stopped complimenting me. That's fair enough. Now that she's smiling, she seems surprisingly cute and playful. Even, want to join me? I mean, I'll have to make space for you, you know, considering how crowded the table is. Um... What? I'll fight for the chance to sit next to you. I don't feel brave enough at all to 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 pick the flirty options. Hmm, I don't know. Someone so eager to invite a stalker to join them might be. Yeah, that is snarky. Uh, if you join my mafia, I can make it so you'll never sit alone again. What is that? Sure, thanks. I'm sorry, but I'm just too casual. I sit across from her and she smiles. Welcome to the cool table. Thanks. I've always wanted to sit here. 
I search for a topic of conversation. So when did you learn to play piano like that? I guess you could say quite recently, actually. What? Really? You must pick up things so quickly. You could say that. Actually, on that note, I didn't mean to listen, but well, the teacher said you would have to start from the basics. Why would she say that? You're amazing. So you're listening on my private conversation as well as watching me. They warned me about people like you, but I don't expect to meet one already. <laughs> I think Jack is joking again. <laughs> Let's see how this plays out. I just overheard as I was leaving. <laughs> she sticks her tongue. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I like you already, Jack. She sticks her tongue out at me as I stumble to explain what I meant. <laughs> You're quite easily flustered, aren't you? About what you heard. It's to do with my power. I used it to get that good at playing because of any actual skill I had to play piano. Hmm, it's still pretty impressive that you can do that. Green Star, thanks. It comes in handy from time to time. Anyway, I never caught your name. And I can't keep referring to you in my head as easily flustered one forever. So spill it. Oh yeah, sorry, my name is Flair. Well, it's nice to meet you, Flair. I'm Jack. If you don't mind me asking, what year are you in? I'm a first year. And you? Me too. Ah, same Marie's. What classes do you take? I've not noticed her in any of my classes before, I, so I, b before, so I guess she takes different ones from me. I guess it's possible I just didn't notice her. Well, I just came from, my sentence drifts off without me noticing as my eyes are drawn to the girl who has just entered the cafeteria. It looks like she's making her way over to the table myself and Jack are sitting. Hey! Hi there. The girl is so striking, it would be hard not to notice her. It feels like there's something more than just her height and unique appearance that makes me want to pay attention to her though. I never felt like I could help but look at someone before. But that's undoubtedly what this feeling is. It's her power of flirtation. I couldn't possibly look away. Hey, how were music lessons today? I look a little confused before realizing she is addressing Jack. Well, standing next to Jack, it becomes even more obvious that she really is tall. It was okay, I guess. I hear the conversation happening, but I can't focus on anything except this new girl. What happened? You were making good progress. Did you mess up during the performance or something? It's nothing like that. It doesn't matter. I'll tell you later. If you're sure. So, am I interrupting something? Not at all. A romantic first dinner date, maybe? These two are very comical. <laughs> oh, get it off, Violet. This is Flynn. We were just talking about some stuff. Some stuff, huh? Sounds interesting. Give me the deets. Violet moves to sit on the seat next to Jack. Oh, it's nothing really. Just talking about him watching me play the piano earlier. Oh, watching you, was he? Was it longingly from a distance? Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I snap out of the weird days I was in. What even was that? It wasn't... I tried to inject, but I'm cut off. My goodness, I warned you, Jack. If you just go flaunting your skills all over, then you're bound to have st We are not stalkers. How many more visual novels am I going to play where the pianoist is going to assume that I'm one of these kind of people, which inherently, 100%, I'm not? Like, admiring good music. Oh, whatever shall we do? Well, nah for a stalker. I shall not let you have my sister. You must best me in hand-to-hand -hand combo before you earn that privilege. Uh, excuse me? I am not a prize to be won in a fight. I've already explained. I'm not a stalker, I swear. I just overheard her playing and came to see who it was. Violet leans over and puts her fingers to my lips, holding my frantic attempts to explain myself. I was just messing with you. No need to panic. I am, as what they would say, easily flustered. I could definitely tell these two were cut from the same slice of bread. <laughs> It's just nice to see Jack making a friend. I was worried she would be lonely without Big Sis Violet. She grabs Jack's cheek and squeezes it, 
before Jack knocks her hand away. Violet doesn't seem bothered as she embraces her in a cuddle, lazily slumping on her as she does. Uh, get off, Vi! Jack attempts to push her away to little avail. Isn't there somewhere else you have to be? Or someone else you could be annoying? Maybe, but it's way more fun teasing you in front of your friend. If they're going to be your friend, then they have to get used to having me around. Fine, I'll leave then. Flair, I enjoy talking with you. Let's talk again sometime. Maybe next time my stupid sister won't ruin our conversation. Jack stands up and begins to walk away, taking the food with her. <laughs> Aww. She makes her way to the exit of the cafeteria and out of sight. Crap. I didn't mean to annoy her that much. Oh well, she'll calm down soon enough. Anyway, I'm Violet. Not that you didn't already know that. Violet takes a seat where Jack was sitting, spinning to face me as she does. Strange. She seems to have mellowed out almost immediately after Jack left. Um, I hope I was in the middle of something there. <clears throat> like a sibling argument. No, nothing like that. That's just how we are. The real Carson experience, so that's your surname? Carson? Is that their family name? I just think she can't handle my eccentric personality sometimes. You did come on a bit strong. I do? I'd have noticed. Violet sticks her tongue out slightly and winks. Honestly, you don't you two don't seem all that different, if you don't mind me saying. Maybe at face value, I guess. But when you get to know us, we are totally different people. Look at our dress since this, for example. Yep. I mean, in that I actually have one. Wow, that's a bit harsh, don't you think? Don't worry, I'm just kidding. I just wish she would stop hiding under those big hoodies of hers. At least she's wearing the hairpin I got her. With that headset she's got and that hoodie, she reminds me of a girl or from the Quintreple... I've forgotten the name of her anime now. Where the protagonist looks after five different sisters, all of them with different personalities and all that. Still, I haven't watched it, I just overheard the name of it. We always seem to clash, especially when it comes to clothes. Mine are too flashy, and I only wear them because I'm a desperate attention seeker, apparently. No, you wear them because you like wearing them. You feel comfortable in them. Hmm. Isn't it natural to want attention? I think the clothes suit you, though. Thank you for noticing. What would we do if we... Um, Oh, we can't go back to uh, <laughs> see what the other option was. Thank you for noticing. You don't look so bad yourself. Thanks. Jack doesn't realise I put work into my appearance and picking up the right outfit. I don't think it's wrong to want people to notice after I put effort in. Really? Absolutely. It took me an hour to just to pick out this arrangement. Wow, that's a lot longer than I expected. Don't feel bad. Most people don't realise. Well, the effort was worth it, at least. Thanks again. I just wish Jack would realise that. Ugh, how she irks me. I can't help but let out a little small chuckle. What? It's nothing. Nuh-uh. What is it? It's just that I guess she must really care about her to get this frustrated. Of course I do. She is my little sister, after all. Now, anyway, we haven't been talking about you, have we? Well, yes, but then again, wouldn't you feel awkward suddenly talking about yourself to a stranger? Stranger? Your words cut deep. People already consider me a friend by now. <clears throat> and why would I feel awkward about it? Getting to know me is a highlight of some people's day. Or so I choose to believe. Humble much? I am. Thanks for noticing. We both begin to laugh slightly. <laughs> Getting back on track. Tell me more about yourself, Flair. Uh, I would be more comfortable picking the flirt option if it wasn't for the second sentence there. <laughs> I will reveal nothing temptress. Uh, I'm a pretty... Nah. You know what, for once, let us... Let us select something a bit more frisky here. 
Oh, nice. I'm thinking a sunrise wedding. That good with you? I'm afraid I'll only settle for sunset. Alas, I guess it was never meant to be. Well, it was nice to meet you, Flair. But I must go now, darling. She bows me a very exaggerated kiss and leaves. Well, she was a character. I worried she might have dragged me into her eccentricity. I'll make my way back to class knowing that I won't be able to forget meeting either of them anytime soon. Mm-hmm. The rest of the day is university as usual. The bell rings and after grabbing all my belongings, I begin making my way home to the student dorms. It's not the largest room, but at least it's a place all to myself. If you have your own ensuite, that's even better. Some universities, the only rooms that you get are rooms where you share showers with other people. And there's always that one person who never clears up behind themselves. So they have hair everywhere, they have soapy bubbles everywhere. They don't contribute towards the bathroom cleaning. I met a few interesting people today. It's been fun. It sure has been fun. The next day I arrive at campus early, determined to get a strong coffee to help me deal with morning classes. A short distance away, two of my fellow students are chatting amongst themselves, but it's far too early for me to pay proper attention. Hey, watch this. I've been practicing and can get it to go even further now. They are way too energetic for it being this early in the morning. I'm both envious and resentful. Wait! Not in that direction! Oh sheesh, watch out! I look up as the panic's cry rings. Oh sheesh! A blast of purple light flies towards me. I extensively try to move out of the way, but I already know that it won't work. It's coming too fast! As a large just effort, I close my eyes and raise my arms to block it. But instead of the pain I expect to feel, I feel a rush of air and hear a strange noise. Eh? Huh? When the collision I was bracing for never comes, I slowly open my eyes. Whoa. A glimmering, almost transparent barrier protects me. With her arms outstretched in front of her is one of the most dynamic looking people I've ever seen. Everything about her projects a lively nature from her vibrant red hair, glowing skin, and deep purple eyes shine with life. A bandage rests across her nose as she looks towards me. Her expression changes from stern to excited grin. You okay? I nod tentatively. Glad to hear it. I wouldn't want to see someone innocent get blasted in the face while I'm around. She slowly lowers her arms and sh as she does some of the barriers surrounding us begin to fade. She turns towards a student who launched with purple light and points her finger at them. Aha. Uh -huh. Her expression changes again, this time however to anger. Hey you! Hell are you doing? You could have killed him! I'm sorry, I didn't realise you were there. I just want to show off what I could do. Yeah, he's really sorry. Well, how about next time, look first, then shoot. Exactly. Exactly, lively girl. Got it? Both students give a scared nod. Good. Now get the hell out of here. <laughs> the students scramble away, disappearing out of view. With them gone, I look back to the girl who rescued me. Thank you. You saved me back there. Don't worry about it. I did what any person would have done. Not any person would have that kind of power. A special kind of person. But also as well, it takes a nice person to then use that power for a benevolent cause, such as saving someone back then. Lucky I came early today, I guess. She lets out a small laugh, but it quickly fades as a pained wince escapes her lips. Are you okay? Did some of that hit you? Damn, I was kind of hoping to play the unflinching hero a bit longer. Or at least until you left. I guess you could say that some of it hit me. My power didn't block all of the damage it takes, you could say. Beyond a point, it hurts me too. Are you injured? Don't worry too much. It'll take more than that to cause any actual damage to my body. At least let me take you to the nurse. I guess since I was heading that way anyway, I wouldn't mind an escort. Happily. One last thing before we go. I know it's kind of late, but what's your name? Oh, I'm Flair. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Marissa. Well, Marissa, would you like to lean on me as we walk? Nah, I'm good. You worry a lot, don't you? 
only the normal amount, maybe a bit more for people who saved me from a serious injury. Marissa lets out a small laugh before we make our way towards the campus. You sound a lot, you sound a lot like Cassie. I bet you'll get along. What do you mean? You'll see soon enough. Cassie the nurse? Or somebody that Marissa knows? Marissa seems to know her way to the infirmary quite well, walking with a confident stride. Maybe she has been here longer. Or maybe she's the type to visit the infirmary a lot. As we arrive, she throws open the door with vigor. Oh, whoops! She turns around and places one finger over her lips. Shh! What is it? Funny of her to shush me, given I'm not the noisy one here, but regardless... As I peer inside, I see a boy asleep with his head resting on the infirmary bed. A student? Where's my nurse? Marissa opens the door quietly and sneaks over towards the boy. I don't want to do this to you, Cassie. Actually, what am I saying? I totally want to do this. Wait, what are you... Too late. She's already shaking him. Whoa. Wow, she is not being gentle. That must be Cassie, then. The boy awakes in panic batting Marissa's arms away. What? He fumbles with his glasses but can't seem to find them. Marissa hands them over with a grin. Here they are, you doofus. Leave me alone, Marissa. What are you doing here? He glances around blaringly, taking in the room before he ba his eyes settle on me. Now that he's awake, I'm able to get a good luck at him for the first time. Despite being fresh and waking up, he looks surprisingly well put together. He's smartly dressed and his clothes are neat and clean. Even his hair seems well kept, despite the slightly ruffled look. He seems serious and sophisticated, if a little tired. Or a lot tired. Huh? Oh. He sits up straight, looking more awake now, and rather embarrassed. Ah, <laughs> I can explain. But first, he glanced to Marissa at my side. Why are you in the infirmary this early? Luckily for this one, I was. Otherwise, they would be the one you were, you were, <laughs> you were checking over. What, you got injured already? What happened this time? Hey, don't be like that. I did what had to be done. Nice jet, but where is the nurse? Shouldn't we have waited until they arrived? Maybe. But honestly, Cassie can do about as good a job as the nurse can. Well, that's obviously not true. They have a degree in medicine. And even if it was true, which isn't... You know I'm not supposed to, Marissa. Who needs a degree when you have a power like yours? Cassie looks exasperated, and I get the feeling that this isn't the first time they have had this argument. Please don't dismiss all the work that goes into being a, nur a nurse. My power couldn't possibly compare. <laughs> you heal me up all the time against my better judgement, but I still can't do more than minor bruises and injuries. I'm not allowed, for one thing. He looks to me brow frowned. Sorry, I didn't properly explain why I'm here. I've been permitted to serve as assistance nurse because of my power, but I'm only allowed to work on minor injuries. Assistance nurse? He looks the same age as Marissa. Please don't let Marissa fool you. I must have explained a thousand times. Has anyone ever told you that actions speak louder than words, dear Cassie? <sighs> then perhaps I should stop healing you altogether. Maybe then you'd finally learn to be less reckless. Whoa, there's no need to be hasty. She quickly backpedals, then relaxes with a grin. Besides, I know you'd never do that. You love me too much. Don't be too sure. He looks completely deadpan. <laughs> anyway, now that I've successfully woken you up, I'd best be off. I promised the team I'd practice with him this morning. But I've not healed you yet. Marissa, don't just ignore me. Too late, she's already race, racing down the hallway. Cassie calls after her, but it falls on Death's ears. And don't run. He sinks down into a seat, looking exhausted. That girl. Comes in, wakes me off, then runs off down the corridor. What is she, five? He seems to remember that I'm there again at last. Sorry about that. That's alright, so... You're already the assistant nurse here. You seem pretty young. He nods. I'm first and foremost a student. But in between classes, I'm allowed to serve as assistant nurse here because of my power. Vitality renewal. 
Vitality Renewal. Sorry, I must be more tired than I thought. There was something else in there that you were going to say. Speaking of, it's later than I thought. I'd best get, I'd best get going. That seems like an excuse, but to be fair, he does seem like a guy who has to be early to be early. Cassie makes his way to the exit and then stops at a slightly open door and turns to face me again. It was nice to meet you. Maybe next time it might be under less dramatic circumstances. Hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll come visit again. Feel free to pay a visit whenever I'm here. Although I suppose you wouldn't know if I was here unless you visited. Maybe next time we can pr chat properly. Well, see you around. Hopefully not as a patient, though. <laughs> I say goodbye and then realize I've yet to get a coffee I needed, and it's now time to make my way to class. Blank! Fudge! Well, I guess it's going to be a long day. A long old day. Before class starts, I hear some of the students talking. Did you see that guy outside of campus? Yeah, I've seen him outside the gates a few times now. Is he even a student? He's a bit old, isn't he? Creepy. I wonder what he wants. I saw one of the teachers talking to him once. What happened? He walked away. I don't think he'll stay away, though. Yikes. I'll have to be sure to be careful when leaving campus. Maybe it's harmless, but... A potential... Stalker. You can't... You can never be too careful. Class starts shortly after, and by lunch I've completely forgotten about the conversation I overheard. I settle into a peaceful routine over the week. I feel like I'm getting used to university life. However, this peace was shattered the next Monday morning. English literature starts as normal, but not, not, sorry, but not long after attendance is taken, we're interrupted by a knock on the door. The university's chancellor enters, followed by a boy I've never seen before. He's pale. With white hair and piercing blue eyes. Is he Alpino? He looks interesting, but also highly uncomfortable. Albino, sorry. He stands awkwardly at the front of the class. Maybe he's nervous about being in front of it front of everyone. A low murmur breaks out amongst the other students as they begin to gossip about the boy. Quiet down now. Okay everyone, this is Ellis. As of today he will be attending this class as usual. I wonder what's going on. This is university. It's not like new students need to be introduced to the class. And why would the Chancellor himself get involved? A few students start to whisper amongst each other and give each other intrigued looks. The Chancellor places a hand on Ellis's shoulder, but then yanks it back quickly. He shoots Ellis a reprending look. I wonder what that was. Now, Ellis, why don't you go sit down? The Chancellor scans the room for a second before pointing to the row of seats I'm sat on. Look, there's some space on that row. It looks like Ellis says something, but he's too far away to be audible. He starts to make his way up to the stairs towards me. Excuse me. I stand up to allow Ellis pass me. I guess he wants to sit by the wall. Uh, thanks. Okay, everyone. Sorry for the intrusion. I'll let you continue with your lesson. The university chancellor starts to leave the room, but not before turning to the teacher and giving them a knowing nod. Okay, music is just a little too loud. Maybe that's just a little bit too quiet. And crank it up a little bit. The teacher returns with gesture. This all seems a tad strange. Why all this fuss over introducing him to the class? It could be his um, name. It could be his demeanor. Maybe he has a disability that we don't know about. And why wasn't he here before now? Whatever reason it seems as though I have a new row companion. Right, now class, with that my disturbance out of the way, why don't we get on today's topic? Most of the class look to be paying attention to the teacher again, with a small amount of eyes still on Ellis. The, li the lecture continues as normal after that, though Ellis never looks any less uncomfortable than we he has first entered. He doesn't seem to engage in the lesson and looks to be doodling rather than taking notes. I whisper over to him. Hey, are you okay? Huh? Uh, yeah. 
If you need any help, just ask. I can try and catch you up on what you've missed. It's cool. I get it. Just uh, don't come close to me. Oh, okay. That was a little rude. Something might be going on. Don't judge him on first sight because he may have had a past experience which really traumatized him. I was only offering him help. For the rest of the lesson, Ellis continues to doodle. As the bell rings for break, the teacher starts to leave the room. Immediately, a large portion of the class heads over to Ellis. Hey, how come you're only in our class now? Were you sick or something? What's your power? Is it a strong one? Ellis's hands clench up. His whole body, old being, looks visibly uncomfortable. What happened with the university's chancellor when he held your shoulder? Back off. Small sparks cra crackle in the air. Is that your natural hair color? Hmm. One of the students stood close to Ellis, which is attempting to touch him, but their arm jerks back as a small spark of electricity hits them. Hey! How oh, that hurts! Something to do with electricity. A few students back up from Ellis, but most can't as they're blocked by those behind him. Ellis clenches his hands tighter, causing his pencil to break in his hand. Don't touch me! I told you to back off! At this point, the teacher notices the commotion and heads back inside. The air around Ellis starts to move and vibrate as if they're being pushed in all directions. A few more students are pushed backwards, each letting out a small cry of pain as they do. Ellis! Everyone move away from him now! Ellis's hair starts to stand on end as the air around it becomes more distorted and shifts. What's going on? Hmm. Maybe he can't control his power? Maybe he's trying to force people to back off. Ellis flicks his eye around the room widely. For a brief second his eyes meet mine. I break my gaze away. I stand up from my seat and move back. Hopefully, it will help him feel less crowded. Ellis' eyes go back to frantically scanning the room. The teacher has started making his way up to the stairs, the stairs towards Ellis. Ellis, calm down. Everyone move back. A large majority of the students have now backed away a few feet. A couple of students are still close to Ellis, however. Something that seems to be causing him to stress. It's okay, Ellis. Everyone's backing off. I look for a reaction from him, but got nothing. It's like he can't hear me, as if he's in his own head. An audible hissing sound builds in the air before. A bolt of lightning hits me like cable, causing it to shatter and glass shards to rain down on the glass. Standing suddenly, Ellis launches out another, this time into the air. Gosh. Everyone outside now! Ellis, that's enough! Doesn't he realize he's making it worse by shouting? If you don't calm down, you know I'll have subdued you. Leave me alone. Even with all of this, I can tell Ellis is the most scared one here. Through the anger, I can see small tears forming in the corners of his eyes. I don't want to hurt anyone, so just back off. Stay away from me. The teacher, still struggling to move past the last few students, begins to reach into his pocket. I didn't want to do this. From nowhere, familiar lights appear around Ellis and the teacher. Ah, Tommy, wait. We both look around to see the origin of the lights. It's all right, sir. Tommy's voice is calm and reassuring, despite the fact that he looks embarrassed. Tommy, this isn't the time. But look. The teacher and I turn to look at Ellis, who has, a very, who has had a very different reaction to the sudden appearance of, of the lights. At first, Ellis looks panicked and defensive, but after a few moments, his expression changes, now seeming confused. He reaches out and attempts to grab one from the air, an understandable reaction. His hand passes through, but already the air around Ellis seems to become less distorted, likely no longer shooting from off, here, off of him. His eyes are no longer darting around the room, and his body seems to have relaxed subconsciously. Focusing only on the light in front of him. Looking back at Tommy, I see that he has a soft smile on his face as he watches Ellis's reaction. The teacher backs off and slowly removes his hand from his pocket. 
Ellis, you will calm down and go straight to the Chancellor. It seems you are not as ready to join class as we originally hoped. Ignorant to what he has been told, Ellis continues to follow the lights with his eyes before turning to face Tommy, who has stepped up to him. Here, come with me. I think it might be best if I take you there. Huh? Uh, yeah, maybe. I think that would be best. Wait, who even are you? We can talk while we walk. <laughs> that rhymed. <laughs> Damn it, Tommy. As Tommy starts to leave the room, he gives me a wink before, as he goes. Mm -hmm. I'm worried whatever it was the teacher was reaching for, but hopefully it won't have to, <laughs> I won't ever have to find out. Tommy leads Ellis out of the room, where a large commotion can be heard as the students react to seeing Ellis. Due to the destruction Ellis caused, class is cancelled and we are given a free period. We're lucky Tommy was here, indeed. The calming lights. I don't want to think about what would have happened if he wasn't here. Surprisingly, Ellis does come to class the next day, but the teacher issues a stern warning that no one is to bother him. After what happened yesterday, no one is eager to disobey. Tommy is seated close to Ellis, likely as a safety precaution, which he accepts with a small smile in Ellis's direction. I guess at least now I get to sit closer to Tommy as well. Not a word is said to Ellis by anyone. By the time class ends, he hurries from his seat out of the door. This becomes a new routine. A week passes and I continue to spend time with Tommy. Lately, however, I get a feeling we've been observed. Hmm, observed you say? Okay folks, we're going to leave things off here for the moment. This is definitely a very interesting tale as we go into this. Because even though it has fantasy elements like having your own power, the ability to control those powers with your own mental stability at hand is still just as real and relevant as real life itself. So I think that is something to take away. The psychology behind it is the same, but the actual events that transpire are entirely fantasy based. Well, not entirely fantasy, but the majority of it is. Being angry and chain out lightning, the anger part is definitely real, but the lightning definitely isn't real, from a person anyways. Thank you so much for watching guys, and see you all in the next time of Balance of Power. Please check out this game for yourselves. Something I forgot to mention at the start of the video. There is a link in the description below where you can download this game for free. And also there's a, there's a Kickstarter to it as well at this point in time. Uh, on the day of the upload of this video. Have a lovely day folks and take care of yourselves.